has been on a tear defensively of late in that libero spot for Purdue. And for Penn State, and Jess Merzik been top three in kills per set all season long. But Maggie Mendelson doing some good things in the middle, emerging as a threat for Penn State. Yeah, and I also really love what I'm seeing from Tremel in the middle. She's been outstanding in her offensive numbers. So ready to get after it here. We mentioned Purdue did a rare thing. That's win in this building. Boilermakers swept the Nittany Lions in two matchups last year, but a 3-0 sweep for Penn State in West Lafayette this year. And we'll see how the Boilermakers respond. Dave Shondell said the worst performance of our season. They were able to change some things up afterwards. And we'll see how things go the second time around against the Nittany Lions. Right away, the player you talked about, Taylor Travel, getting after it. Yeah, we see it a lot from Penn State when that pass is in system. Tremel is absolutely lethal. She's currently hitting 460 on the season. So she's going to get a lot of balls tonight if they're able to pass the ball to the setter. And Shondell certainly worried about that serve from Jillian Grimes. Libero for Penn State as he start freshman setter who has been phenomenal this year for Penn State working it to the outside Hudson off hands and down the junior from Fort Wayne, Indiana one of two ABCA national semifinalists for national player of the year along with Jess Merzik playing in this game Yeah, Hudson is so good at just hitting high off the blockers hands You see it in that very first swing of the night from her. Uh, she's gonna be a name that we call a lot this evening uh, Dave Shondell talking about tough serving for his team. And that's a nifty start there to get things going for the Boilermakers. Yet the only way that Purdue is going to keep this offensive team of Penn State off balance is by serving tough balls just like that. So Dave Shondell pleased with that serve from his libero horn on. And her ninth ace of the season, senior from New Albany, Indiana. Better. Handle this time from Penn State in the back. Morzik denied. Dumped there from Taylor Anderson, sophomore setter for the Boilermakers. Working it on the backside there for Raven Colvin, who has an awkward little fall as she missed down the line, but able to get up and get back ready to play. Yeah, definitely don't want Colvin out for this one. She is an outstanding middle blocker. Over 600 career blocks, so we're going to see her do some damage and get points for her team on that front row with her blocking. Ava Faldudo, excellent freshman in a DS role, overpass there, and cream to the deck for Raven Colvin. Dave Shondell, 22nd season at Purdue, program's all time win leader, closing in on 500, two time Big Ten Coach of the Year. And with his group right now, Again, they've won six in a row, Audra, but all games they probably were expected to win. Can they get a big road win against a top five team to even better their resume for the upcoming NCAA tournament? Yeah, without a doubt. This is a huge one for Purdue, Dave Shondell and his Boilermaker team. And right now they're off to a really good start, being aggressive from the service line and just grinding it out. I love to see this team come together here at the tail end of the season. Uh, Lizzie Carr up front, Pennsylvania native, hoping to have a big night. Westchester down near the Philadelphia area. Uh, Penn State going to run it to the outside. Maggie Mendelson getting things done. Here you see Mendelssohn going off one foot and just swinging hard and just not avoiding the block, hitting the block, and using the fact that the hands were not moved into the center of the court, but rather facing outside, wiping it off. Now the block leader on the season for the Nittany Lions, averaging about two kills per set. Goes Penn State to within one. Merzik with the serve. And now up the gut. There's Lizzie Carr in six feet, six inches tall, and that's a different dynamic here for this Boilermaker team. Absolutely, a different dimension. Here you see her going up, and she's a right side attacker in that serve receive pattern. She's gonna hit a quick out of the middle and does it very efficiently there. Talk about her and a fun story of how she got to West Lafayette from the Keystone State coming up. Cameron Hanna doing what she does, terminate 
for the Nittany Lions, able to come off the block and get things rolling for Penn State. Yeah, I'm impressed with Hannah's ability to, you know, move that ball around a little bit. Good hand-to-ball contact, and she was all power last year. This year we're seeing a few more finesse shots like that one down the line. Watch Quinn Menger serving. She's got seven aces across the last two matches and keeps it rolling. It's impressive. Whenever you can serve the ball and it lands in the last inch of that end line, boy, that's impressive. She just go, she goes for it, and there you see. What a great replay there. Right on that line, perfect serve. Had four in the win against Illinois, three more against the Terps, and one of her first crack here. And now better handle there from the Boilermakers receive-wise and right up the gut. Raven Coleman just detonates off the block. Yeah, and off the pass of Chloe Chacoin. You know, Chacoin's known for her outside attacking ability, but boy, her passing platform is exceptional. She's in that lineup for six rotations. Does a really good job for the Boilermakers. 6-5 here, Purdue at the outset. Coleman cranks it a bit long. And the block leader in the Big Ten. Can't dial it in. She'll get subbed out here for the moment, even at six apiece. And back to Izzy Stark. And joining her older sister Angelina on this Penn State roster this year. Man, what a find. Averaging about 11 assists. Top freshman setter. Assist wise in the conference. Beautiful hit there for Hannah going cross court. Yeah, what makes it so beautiful is it's high over top of the block into the corner of uh, Purdue's backward backcourt defense. Uh, Hannah just really starting off really well so, so far tonight. And you saw Katie Schumacher calling third season at her alma mater. And this team flying high. Their only losses. In the non-conference to Pitt, in conference to Wisconsin, two top six teams, and they've got some terrific wins early in the portion of the year, starting out with those victories at Tennessee, here against Louisville, from two sets down against Kentucky, and the big one against Purdue earlier this campaign, the sweep to win in West Lafayette. Chicoin able to go off speed on that little touch down the line. That is a great save there by Chicoin to take a ball that was really tight, and she manages to do something so positive with it. Just a nice tip over the block, just kissing that sideline. Ryan McAleer, the freshman DS in the serve. Can't dial it in. Second service error here on the Boilermakers along with the ace. And now back to the big serve of Cameron Hanna. And that one, too, finds the tape. Hanna checks out. Jocelyn Nathan, sophomore from Wilmington, Delaware, comes in. As you look at Chloe Chicoin, third team All-America last year for Purdue. And again, really starting to find her game after being in a little bit of a funk at a stretch this season. Nice pancake. Beautiful layout from Hornung to keep it alive. Jura Vicious had the power shot denied last time. Goes off speed this time. And now pumped by Hudson and a tough touch for the Nittany Lions. Yeah, you know, when we talk about the defensive effort that Purdue always shows, it's going to be demonstrated right here. Take a look at Hornung going hard after the ball, a little pancake dig there, and then they're able to transition and get a good swing on that deceptive line shot. And this Boilermaker team leads the Big Ten in digs per set. Start. Chacoin from the back, setting up Anderson. Good get from Grimes to take care of that missile from Eva Hudson. Another super dig by Horna. Penn State trying to get that one-handed set there. Going to be a lift called against Izzy Stark. That's a great description of what you showed a little while ago, trying to beat the grind of the Purdue defense. Yeah, you know, Purdue just forces you to make plays in return, and they just grind it out and keep the ball alive. And as you see there, Penn State with an error results in that Boilermaker point because of their defensive effort. And you see that top dig category in the conference. Their receive game is good. 
Penn State also top three in the league in the reception game. Big reason why both of these teams are in the top eight in the country, their ability to handle the ball. And it's why both coaches talked about we got to serve and take them out of that to be able to have some offensive opportunities. Yeah, when you have great ball control, you got to try and put pressure on with the serve. And both of these teams right now passing fairly well in the first set. 10-10 here at the outset. Big swing from Shacoin. Penn State scrambling to get it over. Merzik does. Anderson going back set there. And the finish from Lourdes Myers, redshirt senior from Alliance, Ohio, who has developed into a top flight middle for the Boilers. This right side attack, you're going to see the slide by the middle blocker, is huge for, Penn, for Purdue because they're known for being left side heavy. So if they can get some attack from that right side of the court, it's going to be really hard for Penn State's block to keep track of that. Jess Merzik relatively quiet, but a thunder swing from her has her checking in. You got to love when you have a left side attacker, you can just lay that ball up and know that she's going to do something aggressive with the ball. Jess Merzik showing why she is a star for this Penn State team. Three time first team all Big Ten, twice at Michigan. And Last year in her first year for the Nittany Lions. How about the high rising Raven Colvin from our vantage point. We're right behind her. Look at this elevation. <laughs> yeah, she gets up and the issue is right now for Penn State. Are they going to change their scheme blocking tactic? Are they going to stay in a base blocking position and read? We're going to track that here in this match. Right now Purdue with the upper hand. Anderson run in the middle again. Why not? Colvin feeling it goes again and it's Purdue by a pair. Well, Coven, you saw her run behind in this one. She's going to run a B, a 31. And I love how she makes herself available, getting up and giving herself some distance from the net to swing through that ball. Four kills hitting 600 so far on five swings. And now that one going courtesy of Penn State. Boilermakers trying to run the hot hand. But instead a side out here, for the Nittany Lions. Those are the ones you really want to score on. You don't want to give Penn State any easy balls by, you know, blocking that one out of bounds. Just take it and sm slam it in the court, not out of the court. Hudson, top of the net, and Izzy Stark, and again, with her size at 6-1, she can be a factor in tight plays at the net. Take a look at that great elevation. I had to fact check this. Six times she was freshman of the week and three times Big Ten setter of the week. She has been a week in a year of terrific freshman setters That's across right. the conference. Yes. Another look at the work here from Colvin, able to find open space cross court on the slot. Stark going back set. Merzik working out of the back row. Grimes with a rare misplay on the first touch. And State still got it over. Off speed there, set a little low from Anderson, but works out. Shacoin on the edge, able to find the floor and pen to Timber early in the conference season. Dave Shondell said the key tonight, it's all about attitude. It's Penn State, they've got toughness, especially here. We need to walk onto this floor and believe and also not fall into big holes like they've done at times when they haven't played well. I said, you can't fall down 6-0, 7-2, and they're up here by three. They've come out impressively. Well, they have, and I think this is a very much improved Purdue team. They're different. We're seeing a lot of sets to the right side from the middle uh, side attacker, and that's different than what we saw the first time these two teams matched up. Well, Penn State's offense, which has been elite, hitting under 200, maybe that move from Maggie Mendelson will get things flowing. Nice kill there, second of the match for this junior, six feet, five inches tall from Ogden, Utah, transferring in from Nebraska, along with Caroline Juravicious after last season. Anderson going down the middle. Swing from Carr Long and Quinn Menger, who's been a hot server of late for Penn State, back in. The Lions trying to go on a run with her at the helm. In a potential future lawyer, applied to 16 law schools. So sort her of dream job is to be legal counsel in sports, maybe 
for a pro team like Pittsburgh Steelers, which I believe she loves. Already accepted to one law school, hoping to find some others and make some decisions on her future soon. Right now, the decision for Penn State, keep pounding the Purdue block and hope one goes out, and it did. <laughs> It takes a lot of courage once you get blocked once to go up and take another rip on the ball. And you're going to see great coverage by Penn State. And then, again, that courage from Cameron Ham Hanna to just go after it. That's the sign of a great left side attack. Four kills hitting 429 is Hanna already. Menger thumps that one long. So Purdue retakes the lead. Side out. And for Purdue, number 21, Julian Keene. Julia Kane will come in. Speaking of hot servers, she's been excellent as you look at the numbers for Hannah and that hitting percentage increase from last year. The kills per set, too. Kane comes in, though, can't find the range, and she'll check right now. Colvin coming out, and it's Horn on it. It's tough to come off the bench, but that's the role for those serve specialists. Kane look to get another crack later. Is he Stark now? Puts one into the air at 17 all. Shacoin able to find her rhythm. Shacoin again getting a lot of action and serve receive. They're trying to serve her deep, pushing her back, but she's got such great feet and she passes the ball, gets all the way outside. And at 5'10", and I think that's given her an inch, at 5'9", she goes hard and just uses that block. Three kills on five swings, hitting 600 early on is Shacoin. Good get there from Ryan McAleer, freshman who check, checked in. Uh, good effort for the Boilermakers, but running out of time and touches point Penn State. Good toe-to-toe -to -toe battle here, as expected, between two teams ranked in the top eight in the country. Four of the Big Ten teams reside in the top eight in the national rankings, seven of the top 25. Up the middle. And it looks like we have a net violation here on Purdue. With that, Shondell is going to call a timeout, kind of regroup here a little bit. They're not down by very many, but he can sense that the rhythm is off with his team. Mini surge for Penn State to jump ahead in the monster part of this set. Coach could have a refreshment and then think about what the chat with his team about coming up. Both a cure first and second round hosting duties with a strong finish. And you look at the title race here, as you alluded to. Audrey here in the Big Ten. Nebraska in the driver's seat. Again, big showdown against Wisconsin this weekend. But Penn State, if it wins out, including against Nebraska, it's certainly got the numbers. Yeah, there's a lot of drama left to be um, left to happen here in the last two weekends of play. And so, as you said, Nebraska is looking really good, but two tough matches ahead of them. Certainly, and for Purdue, this starts a four-game stretch to end Big Ten conference play where the Boilermakers says Merzik converts out of the timeout down the line, Audra, for Purdue. Their last four foes, including Penn State tonight, all of them are ranked or receiving votes, and three of them are on the road. Right, yes. So a challenging gauntlet here for the Boilermakers down the stretch, and especially when you're looking at Jess Merzik and company and this offense heating up. Service error helps the Boilermaker cause, gets the side out. We'll see Shacoin serve. Each team now with a trio of service miscues. Grimes sliding over to make first contact, and Merzik mashes one to the deck. A little bit about Grimes here on that serve receive pattern. This is the confidence that you want from your bro. Taking that pass, as you said, sliding in front of a potential passer, having that confidence to deliver a great ball, and then Merzik just with a bomb cross court. See her fist pump afterwards from Grimes, knowing that she helped set that up from the first contact. Free ball here played over by Penn State for the Boilermakers. Hudson had to stretch for that, and another good Grimes get. Stark running the middle. Mendelssohn 
Able to find the floor on a tough end. Love the way Stark is moving the ball around. I believe we're going to see this here. Right in the center, setting pocket when she's off the net, she's pushing that ball to her middles. 113 here at home this season, the last four of last year. Trying to keep that string going. And Penn State's numbers offensively bumped up under 200 earlier, hitting at 324 now. Part of the reason they've been able to find this lead by three, make it four. Merzik with another put away, matching Cam Hanna with five kills here in the opening set. Well, she's doing a great job, and Grimes is just digging nails. Take a look at this great defensive effort on Penn State's side of the net, and then this bomb. Merzik doing what she does so well, ripping apart the defense. Good finish there from Myers. Jocelyn Nathan checking back in with that excellent last dig for Penn State. Boilermakers get a much needed side out. Trying to see if they can salvage this set. And this is going to be a critical serve. Can they take Penn State out of system right here? Hornung had an ace early. Good pass to start. Great effort from Nathan to Stark and Mendelssohn finishing. Again, we're seeing more and more middle attacks that are getting points for Penn State. Beautiful pass, as you mentioned, and then Stark forcing middle. I love what I'm seeing from Izzy Stark, the freshman setter for Penn State. Hudson on the outside. Grimes to Stark, cross court. Merzik goes off speed. Back set for Colvin, her pushover. Another good get from the back. That time, Faldudo saving it. Penn State finishing off an impressive rally here in the opening set. Beautiful team defense by Penn State. Again, Faldudo with a critical dig, getting that chance to win the set, and they do. Here in recent weeks from teams, people she doesn't know, says it's been overwhelming, but added the awesome thing is that she loves coming to practice mm -hmm. and the games and able to focus on that during this battle. Yeah, she has shown such resiliency and just a class act by Purdue to, you know, give her some flowers. Um, you know, the battle is real and she's a fighter. She's a tough cookie. Well, her team kind of capturing that spirit in that opening set. And Purdue kind of had a handle, Dave Shondell wanted an attitude from his team. It was there, what changed? Well, I think the difference was Penn State. Their defensive game just got better and better. Serve receive got better, and their middles were really unstoppable in that first set. And again, the Nittany Lions able to turn up the wick on the offense. It was under 200 for the first half of that set. They ended up hitting 368 through the Nittany Lions in the opening set. Yeah, one, Tremel, one. yep, hitting 400. And uh, Mendelssohn, <laughs> four kills, no errors, hitting 800. So there you go. Hard to stop that. And again, as Dave Shondell talked about, you don't serve effectively enough. Penn State starts to get the middles going. And again, they do damage there with Mendelssohn. Wasn't Tremel necessarily this time, but they find a way to get action going. Do the Nittany Lions. You know, when you can get the middles involved, it just opens up so much for your outsides. And just take a look at how Stark is just exhibiting confidence, finding where her middles are and setting them in various areas along the net. That's a sign of a very confident setter and very good ball control on Penn State's side of the net. 14 aces, three digs for Stark. It was going to be tough challenge to get a sis number 15 there on a tight ball at the net. That falls to the deck. Point Purdue and the Boilermakers up two. Merzik with a cut. Through a vicious deny. Anderson going back and Carr comes cross court and thumps it down. And Lizzie Carr from Westchester, Pennsylvania, started to see more and more time here last few weeks for the Boilermakers. And you've got to be able to score when you're one-on-one, -on -one, and that's what number 15 Lizzie Carr does for the Boilermakers. Jurevicius right into the teeth of Shacoin on the overpass, Penn State an opportunity. And Mendelssohn 
screams that one off of Portland Anchor defender and out. You know, Penn State's making this look really easy, setting that back quick. It takes a lot of communication as Mendelssohn is moving. Let's take a look at this dig here. And then the transition play by Mendelssohn scores. But again, a lot of communication between setter and middle to execute that play. The gaudy numbers continue to get better for Mendelssohn. Colvin trying to push it back corner and a push too far. Do in the set win for the Nittany Lions in the opener in rare against Purdue of late. Hudson going cross court. And that one goes out of play. Purdue coming in last 11 matches, won 30 of 37 sets again. Some matches on paper they were supposed to win, but Penn State coming out and taking that one away. It'd be interesting to see the response from the Boilermakers here in set two. Izzy Stark on the back set to Mendelssohn. Why not? It's working right now when you call 44's number. Yeah, Miss Mendelssohn is having herself quite the night. 6-5 middle for Penn State. Hitting from all areas along the net. That time of slide, we've seen the A, we've seen the B. So what a valuable asset she has been so far in the first two sets. Her career high, 14 kills against Michigan State earlier this year. Right now, rolling there with a half dozen. And a little over a set. And Penn State continuing to find the right hitter. Hannah there delivering again. I'm so impressed by Penn State's defense in the backcourt, just really conquering down. You know, Eve Hudson's just hammering the ball, and they seem to be in the right spot. They know her angles, and they're digging her up right now. Anderson coming back to try to get that set. Hudson will play it over. Free ball in the line. And now Merzik just comes up to play it from the back for Penn State. Stark again a little low. Hannah trying to make an adjustment and shut down. Well, Stark, Stark was um, trying to make a tricky set. You're going to see that she tried a little deception here. Ended up delivering the ball a little bit low tight and inside. So, you know, you don't want to make an error on that. You want to try to, you know, rally up, recycle that point. And, Cameron Hammer, Hannah wasn't able to do it on that play. Purdue by one. Stark, Hannah on the outside. And again, the block there for Purdue, this group, top 12 in the nation, fourth in the Big Ten, 2.8 blocks per set. I have such a high level of respect for outside hitters that can do this. You get blocked and you just are so resilient within the rally and you go hard after it to get a point for your team. Cameron Hanna doing a great job getting multiple swings in order to score a point. Yeah, finding a way against that solid Purdue block. And now Menger, hey, you mentioned she's been on an ace parade of late. How about her second tonight with some help from the tape? Yeah, it's, it's always great to be a little lucky and that's exactly what she was on that one there hits the tape trickles over easy point both aces courtesy of the lefty senior car cranking one cross court but just a little long you know car is not getting great hand to ball contact that ball is actually floating out instead of getting her ball her hand wrapped around the ball to get some top spin on it and that's why that ball is sailing wide menger trying to continue this run he lines by two hudson another haymaker faldudo handled that or none first contact and trammel Shows up with a solo stuff. The chalkboard. Yeah, let's take a look at Cam Hannah. These are things that coaches value. She takes multiple swings in a rally to score. She's got seven kills, team high, match high, hitting 385. She's showing patience and playing hard, playing resilient. And there you see her numbers. She's doing a fantastic job here in the first two sets. Again, leading both teams with seven kills. And she had a match high 14 in the win at Purdue. And leading the way again.
for Penn State. Player that told us in a conversation earlier today as Stark out of the timeout gets the dump there that Cameron Hanna's ultimate goal is to be a judge. Criminal justice major working on her master's degree. Said, I got to go to law school first, but would like to continue her playing career after college, potentially overseas or in one of the professional leagues here now in the States. Yeah. Stark, Menger going to the outside. And that one is in. Well, that judge right now is a volleyball player, and she can pound the gavel <laughs> because that was another blistering ball. Oh, yeah. I mean, if uh, she doesn't get All-American status this year, I don't know who is more deserving. Look at that shot right in that corner. Cameron Hanna just having herself a night. And finding her way here after transferring, starting her career at Clemson. Becoming a fixture with Penn State. Stark. Hannah again trying to squeeze that one in down the line, but looked at why. It's interesting talking with her, and again, the growth of this team. Look at Penn State this year 25 and 2, 15 and 1. They've kind of been flowing through the only toe stub to Wisconsin here a few weeks ago, but why has this team been so good? in this grouping. She talked about all the transfers on this team. Jess Merzik, Maggie Mendelson, Taylor Trammell, herself, Caroline Juravicius, their main hitting court, they've all played different places before. Now they've come here, talked about their experiences and what they want to work well with this group under that woman and the coaching staff and it's all working really well. Yeah, and they're peaking at just the right time. And I think it's just Izzy Stark's confidence on the court. She's starting, well, she's been great all year, but I think there's that leadership that she's starting to develop here. And what I love about Stark is she wants to be great for the seniors. She says that a lot, and I can really appreciate that in a freshman setter. Um, and Izzy Stark is doing just a phenomenal job uh, leading the charge here for her team. And again, daunting tasks like some of the other freshman setters that have come into this conference, especially when they got a veteran core here. But this group trying to achieve something that they really haven't done, and that's make a deep run in the NCAA tournament. Lost it in the Sweet 16 last year. Looking to see if they could make it all the way to championship weekend this year. Juravicious, a little bit of fine work deflecting off the pen, uh, Purdue defense. Loving Jess Merzik on the backcourt there. She stays deep and she's able to play lots of balls that are coming deep. She keeps the ball alive. And then um, Caroline Duravicious was on that left pin. Typically, she's a right side attacker. She's able to score with a nice finesse shot. On the board, her first kill on her eighth swing of the night. Grimes trying to save it. And Taylor Trammell kept it up. Put over by Merzik, but man, insistent for the makers. Not gonna miss when you get Eva Hudson in that spot. Yeah, when, when Hudson is one on one, you're gonna see a huge gaping hole in the block. She's gonna exploit that, but again, great defensive effort to keep the ball alive. Take a look at number one for Penn State. Low, or slow getting to the outside. Lots of area on that net to swing into. And the numbers for Hudson continuing to elevate throughout this season, working things defensively too. Again, that tough fall playing for USA Volleyball. Last summer hurt her shoulder. Dave Shondell said, you know, just the normal pop on her ball wasn't there early in the year, but it's gotten better and better, and the numbers have elevated. Look at the kills per set, about five and a half the last 10 matches or so. It's a big reason Purdue's been on a tear, and right now on the comeback trail down two. Serve coming from Horna. How about the one handed set there from Izzy Stark? Stark for Mersey. McAleer first contact. Another crunching ball off the right arm of Eva Hudson. You know, within that rally, Stark had a great one-handed set. I'm so impressed. There's not a lot of setters in the country that can do 
this. Take a look at that. Pushed all the way outside, and it's perfect. The set is on a dime. It's so impressive. And that freshman, I'd say coaches talking about physically being ready and also being able to come in here again last semester at the end of last year and have a full spring and summer with this group. And the benefit of the extra practices from their off-season trip to Europe as well. And State watching Purdue claw even at 13 apiece and a timeout for the Nittany Lions. Well, last set, Purdue was in front. Penn State rallied back. Now, Dave Shondell's team trying to return the favor. After Nebraska finally got a long-awaited win after a stretch in Madison, the return trip now for the Badgers to go to Omaha. Yeah, this is a must-watch. You're going to see high level of play. And again, it's a must-win for Wisconsin if they want to stay in the conversation of winning a Big Ten title. And Penn State fans, of course, want Wisconsin to win. You know, this is all going to shake out in the next couple weeks, and the drama is building. Uh, but that number two versus number six is going to be a must-watch. Shouldn't say Omaha, though. They'll be excited in Omaha. They'll be excited, really, in Lincoln and right. everywhere in the state ready for that showdown. You think of big times in this conference. And again, with all of the power, see how it all shakes out down the stretch. And it's great to have drama going in to the last few matches. Hudson able to direct that down. It's always fun when the schedule makers get it right. Feels like <laughs> yeah. they are down the stretch, especially right. with Nebraska and Penn State on a collision course maybe for next weekend. Hudson getting it right, right there. Take a look at that swing. She's got just such a knack for that thumb down shot, four to four. What a beauty. Penn State, Purdue trading points out of the timeout. And now Hudson starting to get 17 involved a little bit more here and again mixing up her speeds well yeah and i was just going to say that mixing up her shots you saw just a thunderous hit prior to that and then a nice finesse shot right in the middle of the defense for penn state came into this match with over 1150 swings already on the year jess mercic came in with a thousand plus two and you understand audra again for the leaders of these teams trying to figure out how to get it done with what you have to expect is some wear and tear on the bodies here in mid-November. Yeah, and you know, Mirza gets picked on a lot. People go after her on serve-receive and she gets a lot of swings for her team. What I like about Penn State though is other people are elevating their level of play to take a little bit of that pressure off Mirza. Certainly gotten that balance tonight. Hannah with eight kills, Mendelssohn six, Trammell with three. Got Hudson leading the way with seven, Colvin five, Shacoin and Myers each with three. Colvin trying to work up front, has some assistance alongside Kenna Wallard, again, who had been starting, now subbing in, working along the front line. Colvin showing what she does so well, just being patient and balanced on the block. Purdue by multiple points now. And it keeps on cooking. Shacoin rising strong. Well, what I'm seeing right now are the boys. And also, again, the sweep of Purdue. Again, both of these teams, the best part about that, no blemishes against kind of lower teams. They yeah. have proven that they are among that top core of teams right now. And again, always interesting to see especially how it shakes out with some big matches for both these teams' final two weekends of where the selection committee slots everybody. So much fun to watch. <laughs> I do want to note that Cameron Hanna got subbed in the backcourt, not for her defense. Right now, Penn State needs a little bit more offense, takes some pressure off of their front row, so we'll see if Hanna gets some sets in the backcourt. Hanna there with the first contact, tight at the net, Mendelssohn. Trying to keep it alive, battling Colvin. There's Hannah out of the back row. First contact from Hoda. Shacoin trying to get it done, but man, Mendelssohn and Stark were right in her mug. Yeah, the, the kiss of 
death set, low tight and inside, and you're going to see that right here. Nowhere for her to go, maybe try to recycle the point, but that ball is set tight inside hands, just eating that up. And Penn State, third block, Purdue has four. Faldudo popping that up, Stark going for Hannah. Bumped up from Horno. Shacoin trying to push that down the line. Back set. Waller checking in and delivering her first kill of the night, and it's a biggie. Yeah, great move by Shondell. You know, not a lot of productivity from Carr, so he puts Willard in, and she's able to get a point. That's a big one for her team. 19-16 Purdue. Julia Kane in to serve. And stayed able to handle it. And now a call at the net. Net violation of the Boilermakers, second on the night. So a side out. And now Quinn Menger comes in to serve. You're going to see trying to be aggressive and just on the way down, number four, Woolard touching that net. Menger, a couple of aces for Penn State. Shapoin able to handle it, but Stark, a setter block. Yeah. You know, it's one thing to be able to dish the ball nicely, but it's so important to have all the skills, and there you see how she elevates Stark how she is not getting used, presses over, and then again, I'm impressed with her backcourt defense too, all around, just a phenomenal player. Future bright for Penn State. Certainly is. Eddie schumacher Colley talking about that defensive growth for her setter. Menger stepping up there, trying to put that in the air. Now Trammell teeing up Hannah. Anderson. Roll shot there for Shacoin and a beauty. Well, what I love about her placement is that it was right in front of Cameron Hannah. So even if Hannah got that ball up, she would have been on the ground and not settable. So take a look at the placement here. Take out the best hitter on the other side of the net. So high IQ there by Chloe Shacoin. And Taylor Anderson with her 20th assist on the night, along with four digs, helping put. Purdue in position to even things at a set apiece. They can hold strong tail end of this set. Stark with a feisty dump attempt. Busy now running the middle in travel. Faldudo. Hannah. Good get for Purdue, but not able to be converted. And the point for the Nittany Lions. Now well, that's a beautiful display of Big Ten volleyball right there. Long extended rally, people just going hard on defense. And then this big time swing here. Take a look at that dig and then just unable to control that ball. You gotta jump and you gotta get that ball before it gets to the net. Anderson not able to win that race. And now a lift call on Purdue. Or excuse me, a back row attack, yeah. Yeah, I believe that was a back row attack violation. You have to keep your feet behind that 10-foot line. Let's take a look at it again. You want to set the ball so that your back row attacker is flying through the air, but if your foot touches the line, as you see in the replay there, that is a violation. Yeah, is that back row attack. Hudson and company trying to see if they can get back into rhythm here. They do get a critical point and go up by one. Chapoin, ready to serve. Hannah creams another one, continuing to fire away. Well, not only does she cream that ball, but she is a serving target. And on serve receive, she's calm. She gets her platform out, and then she goes to her place to start her approach and gets just such a dynamic swing on that right hand. Now back serving and delivers the beauty. 
She's having a lot of fun tonight. Lots of smiles. Meg and Blackstone. And celebrate Thanks Grilling with us this Saturday from 11 to 2. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Follow with B1G Volleyball right now on X, YouTube, and Instagram and get immediate access to the best highlights, features, and teams you love. Don't wait any longer. Follow at B1G Volleyball on social media right now. Jason Ab, Audrey Flaw, our Big Ten Network crew here from Rec Hall at Happy Valley where Penn State is looking for a 18th consecutive match victory in this building dating back to last year and just a few points away from making it two sets to up. Yeah, and on the shoulders of number eight there, Cam Hanna. Not only is she swinging so well, but she's a target on serve receive and handling it with poise. Big time competitive spirit for her. Uh, Chapoin able to handle that. Big serve from Hannah and get the side out for Purdue. So critical to spread the ball out on offense. Let's take a look at the blocking scheme. There you see it. One on one. The hitter for Purdue goes behind, and there's only one blocker in front of her. Big finish for Lourdes Myers, her third kill. But Taylor Trammell, middle matching middle with big putaways. Such a nice ball handling example there. Serve received the key to making that play work. Another great effort from Jocelyn Nathan. On the back row, defensive specialist for Penn State. Big cut from Eva Hudson. And looky here, 23-23. Eight kill now for Eva Hudson. Kill leader per set in the Big Ten. Merzik cross court. That goes out. And Penn State has a set point. Now that was a tough play by Merzik. She targeted on serve receive, trying to wear her down, but she handles that with poise, gets all the way outside and swings that big point for her team. Ava Faldudo looking to help Penn State put this set away. Izzy Stark, cross court Mersey, deflected. Good layout for Hudson. Penn State, though, with a free ball. Mendelssohn finishing thing us off. Another close set with Penn State getting things done at the high pressure end. It's all about spreading out the offense, and Penn State did it on that play. That was a tough second set. Penn State just grinding it out for the win. The Nittany Lions roar back here. Anna, she's getting targeted on serve receive, and she's rising to the occasion. Again. Coming through with 11 kills, Jess Mersick with eight. And how about this? Coming in, look at the numbers. Exactly the same kills per set for that fabulous foursome. Yeah, it's a treat to watch this kind of play. Both outsides on both teams are just exceptional, high-level, all-American type status. And, you know, they often get picked on on serve receive. And all four of these young ladies tonight are doing just an exceptional job of handling the pressure that it takes to be a leader for their team. See Hudson Chacoin combined with 13 kills. It's 19 for Hannah and Merzik together. So the leaders, the stars, the primary finishers doing what they normally do. Penn State's just done it a little bit better at the biggest points of the sets. And that's why they are a set away from another sweep of the Boilermakers this year. We'll see if Purdue can find some of that toughness that Dave Shondell was talking about, that attitude here, and try to get a reverse sweep here from a two sets to love hole. And right away, Purdue with a good beginning. I think what's really important is when a non-setter is touching the second ball, you have to make sure you're giving your outside hitter an opportunity to take a swing. When balls are tight, really tight, it's hard to recycle those in that time. Just an error in ball handling Penn State gives Purdue the first point of this third set. And overall, 
228 hitting for the Nittany Lions. 192 for Purdue at this juncture. And there's Caroline Drew, a vicious, able to come cross court. She had 10 kills at Maryland last time out, one off her career high, trying to get more involved here. Yeah, she has such a heavy arm, and there you see just not a great approach just because she had to jump so quickly, but that strong arm forces that ball to go cross court. Kill number two for her on the evening. As a start, Mendelssohn had to make a second move towards the ball, and that allowed Purdue to get Lourdes Myers in a great spot. It's a beautifully executed play here. I like the speed of this attack. Take a look at a free ball, easily handled, and then you see nine on the run, and there's that wide open gap there across court, and she just rips it. Burnout. Floats it In service error-wise, each team now with five on the night. Katie Schumacher, Collie's crew has the advantage serve aces three to one over the Boilermakers. Foul Dudo, back serving here. Freshman from Elmhurst, Illinois. McAleer puts it up. And that push cross court for Hudson. Taylor Anderson, a long way to link up with Hudson, but that works. Yeah, and there you see where both teams are trying to exhibit some patience here. None of the second contacts were great. Nobody could take a real good rip on the ball. But Hudson manages to win that point just based on some great finesse shots that she has. She's got a lot of tools in her tool belt. Yeah, it's a great example of what Dave Shondell was talking about with his team today at their practice as Mendelssohn gets another kill. He was talking about little things are huge in communications. You've got to be kind of conversing at all times. He mentioned a big play from last night's Minnesota-Wisconsin thriller where they didn't communicate. Ball just ended up on the floor, uh, everybody looking at each other. Yeah, and yeah. his team trying to do maybe a little bit better job of that here in the third set to keep us going a little further. Speaking of matches, how about that one last night? Yeah, it was volleyball at its finest, and I know it's a tough way to lose when you are just just battling it back and forth, but that is Big Ten volleyball for you right there. That was quite the match. Took me late into the evening, <laughs> but uh, could not uh, go to bed with uh, not knowing the result of that one. So stayed awake and watched the whole thing play out. Hey, Purdue had one of those this year against Nebraska, that wild affair, almost three hours long, in which they gave the Huskers all they can handle before Nebraska was able to take it in five. And doing that, again, on the road in Lincoln. Now trying to come in here to Penn State and see if they can pull one out of the fire. And another difficult, challenging place to play at. Although it's not as been high octane tonight here, Thursday night, early start. Maybe not as vociferous as it can be here in Rec Hall. But Man, the team that Boilermakers are playing against, they are tough enough on their own. And Waller wallops one down the line. It's a great line shot by Waller. And again, the Boilermakers need to make sure that they're running some offense on the right side, as they do here, to spread things out and keep that block guessing for Penn State. And then let's see a great replay there where the block is late to form. Second kill for Waller since coming in off the bench as a sub. Boy, how good is Maggie Mendelson tonight? She is just making herself an offensive weapon in front of the setter, behind the setter. And again, it's taking the Boilermakers block off balance here. And she is just having so much fun tonight, calling for the sets every time she's in transition. Not too often, middle has more kills than Jess Merzig. That's the case. Mendelssohn with nine, Merzig eight. How about things right up the gut here for the Boilermakers? Look at this pass. Hudson putting it on a dime, and then we talk about spreading the offense out. Again, Purdue having to set behind the setter, open things up, and that was a great job by Colvin to make herself available, calling for the set. Just a great Nicely executed service play there. She's got six put away, second most tonight. 
And there's Hannah who leads everybody now with a dozen kills. Boy, she gets up and take a look. Beautiful and handball contact late on the block for Purdue, and then she just rips it cross court. Just such a sharp angle. Uh, 12 kills hitting 308 tonight. Don't know if on the elevator she just hit the top floor right there <laughs> and got up in a hurry. She has a lot of floors she can climb. And rising up again, ding, doors open. <laughs> and here comes Cameron Hanna right through. Yeah, so what do you do? You've got to make sure as a drop-off blocker, you're taking some area of the court. So take a look at Cloisha Coyne. And that ball goes right between her and the libero. So you've got to make, got to be ready, first of all, and then make a defensive get on the ball. Hanna really in rhythm. They cut from the outside from Chicoin, handled by Penn State. Hudson from the back row. Grimes with a nice get. And cross court off the tape and out for Cameron Hatt. Well, she's allowed a couple of right? <laughs> she was going for that cross court shot again, and you know that one's in the rear view. She doesn't care. She's going to go up and rip some more balls here, I'm sure, in this uh, third set. McAleer checking back in for Waller, serving. How about Lourdes Myers right in the right spot? Yeah, you want to make sure as a setter that you're forcing the middle to hit at the highest point possible. This time, ball a little under set, and then not a great opportunity to hit any other angle except straight ahead into the belly of the block. That's it again, requiring that first ball pickup. And going cross court in just a little while. Here we see Penn State in rotation one, where you have Cam Hanna on the right pin and Jurevicius on the left. We're going to take a look at this. That ball was clearly out, so there's no challenge on the play. And a call here into the net again on Purdue. Unfortunate error because for Purdue, that's exactly what they wanted. They took one hitter out. They wanted the, the block to be set up in front of the hitter that they thought was going to get the set, which was the middle, and then a net violation. So an unfortunate error there after a perfectly executed serve to draw out exactly what they wanted from Penn State's offense. So some errors here that are unfortunate at times into the net back row attack violation just some things that you don't want to do especially against the top five team on the road and they have played purdue in inopportune times tonight penn state trying to build off this and bring in one our way off the block did you see that catch by the way that was athletic right, right there very good very good not often you're able to collect one off the swing of that impressive young woman, Jess Merzik. Another kill, a view from our vantage point. Hey there, hey. We're, we're looking alive courtside. Bumped up, Merzik again, Hudson again. Talked about her being tested, and Mendelssohn really a difference maker right up the middle tonight for Penn State. A transition middle attack. So many opportunities to score here, but look at this great defensive get by Purdue. But here you see one on one, so many angles to go. Um, you, know, you have your choice there. If the ball is set off the net, really easy to pick apart the defense. Going to Shacoin in the back. And Mendelssohn reading that beautifully. Setting back row as your only outlet here, it's, it, you know, it's too predictable. So there's really nowhere else that this ball could have gone. And the play evolves very slowly. So the advantage goes to that beast of a blocker there, Maggie Mendelssohn. Block story six apiece. They go to Chicoin again. That time soaring up and another back row Fox Sports app. Kevin Kugler, Jordan Taylor on standby to call that one from Ann Arbor. Warm-ups underway. And we'll see what transpires here. Down the stretch, Penn State looking for a sweep. 
Purdue looking for a recipe to extend this at least to a fourth. And if you're Dave Shondell, what are you preaching to your team right now? Just grittiness, and you got to fight. And really, everything stems from first ball contact. Uh, again, you've got to put pressure on Penn State because when they're able to set their middle and spread out the offense, they become super difficult to defend against. In hitting percentage-wise in this set, 160 to 143 advantage for Penn State. And not a lot of separation in those two sets before, and this one as well, for these teams as they're deadlocked again. What you would expect from two of the top eight programs right now currently in the country. Mendelssohn's number was called again, and Purdue in shutdown mode. Colvin didn't quite get solid contact on it. Anderson. Down the line, Merzik able to finish. You know what I what I love right now is that both teams going toe to toe, really strategizing to exploit the middle of the court and then just staying within the rally and then Merzik just doing what she does best and that's wiping the ball off the edge of the block. So both teams showing tremendous amount of patience within the rally. And back and forth we've gone with all those ties and lead changes. Nathan trying to make another good play. Can and a point for Purdue for yet another tie. And you know, it is going to take a tremendous effort for Purdue to have this reverse sweep tonight, but they're showing that they've got the mental fortitude within points, so they just have to string some points together and really try to get Penn State off of their offensive rhythm. How about that? The no-look dump there for Izzy Stark and a smile from the gifted freshman. Well, you're able to attack the ball when the pass comes right to you, and she is able to take that ball. It looks like she's setting, and with a strong left-hand attack. How about her third kill of the night? And serve error there for Penn State. Interesting when you look at the two setters tonight, Izzy Stark and also Taylor Anderson. Both of them didn't come up as traditional set-only players. Stark set and hit, never ran a 5-1 until before coming truly to Penn State. You see Hannah with another big swing. Anderson was the middle and right side to the middle of high school. So you get players that have really kind of tailored their skills now of late. Yeah, take a look at what Pe Purdue's block was doing, following Mendelssohn as they should. She's been hot all night. That puts uh, Cam Hanna one-on-one. -on -one. So really difficult when you have a setter like Stark that can take that ball, hold it at the highest point of contact, and then decide where she's going to dish it out. And Stark. Making the right choices tonight with her group. And again, it's what Dave Shondell talked about. Again, we don't serve tough enough. They get the middles going, and then it's a problem for our block to decide, are we staying there or going to the outside? Right, and if you have a setter that has that sixth sense where she can kind of feel which way the block is leaning and set the opposite way, it puts your team in such a huge advantage. And I feel like Stark has that sensibility within her. She's able to jump high and almost freeze at the point of contact and then make her decision. She doesn't predetermine where she's setting the ball. How about Quinn Menger? A third straight Menger. Just doing what she's asked to do. Serve balls tough, get us a few points, and get us on a roll. Ask coach what's different with the aces of late. She said put more pace on it mm -hmm. and moving side to side, finding her spots better. That one handled by Hudson. Chapoin trying to finish, Burzik down. Tough hitting error there for Purdue. Yeah, uh, it's just a smart play by Penn State. Roll shot, put the ball in Chapoin's lap. Now you're knowing where the ball is going to get set. It's got to go to the right side, and then you see a hitting error. And so a substitution, we've got Lizzie Carr, number 15, in for the Boilermakers on the right pin. And Waller off the antenna. Penn State. Stretching the lead and giving one back. Menger goes long and she'll check out. Another excellent opportunity for the senior. 
on her entry into the game to do that. Serve and deliver a good stretch. Julia Kane back in trying to generate another positive push here for Purdue. And that's long. Yeah, at this point, you just can't give away points. So you have to be able to serve the ball tough and in. And Dave Shondell, you know, we've got a great view. <laughs> just a little frustrated there. That his player could not come in and make a positive impact when he needed it most. Stark trying to help Penn State add to this four-point advantage. Carr back in went down the line. Great hustle there from Penn State. Anna with the biggest effort. Grime setting. And Jura Vicious watches Purdue commit another yeah. net violation. I believe that's five on the night. Yeah, and this arm swing is just lethal, but I love this, again, defensive effort. Defense is an attitude, and right now Penn State has a bad attitude on this court. Feeling good here at home. Lourdes Myers trying to help the comeback cause. Carr checks out. McAleer checks in. Eddie Schumacher calling again. Her team seemingly has done so many good things throughout this year. Just one non-conference loss to top-ranked Pitt. And the other one to sixth-ranked Wisconsin. Everybody else has been a Nittany Lion victim. Anderson and the rest of the Boilermakers, McAleer included, is running out of room on the side. A Taylor Tremel with a key block there. It wasn't a stuffed block, but it was a controlled block, and her team is able to transition out of that. So, you know, you always want stuffed blocks, but a touch block that's controlled and your backcourt can play it is so valuable. And an ace from Hannah dipping inside the line. Fifth ace of the night for the Nittany Lions. Well, Hannah was clutch at the tail end of the second set, and here you see just the pressure that she's putting on with her serve tonight. And now a rough first contact for Purdue. So free ball here for Penn State. Anderson going Chacon, and that's blocked down. Trammell delivers. Beautiful lateral speed here. Take a look at how Tremel, she's late, but she never gives up on the ball, and she just jumps and makes sure her hands go extended back into the middle of the court. Izzy Stark looking for Mozik, and why not? Penn State's leader putting the Nittany Lions on the verge of yet another home victory. Match points a plenty here for the Nittany Lions. They only need one. Merzik up front with the block, and Penn State has done it to Purdue again. A sweep in September in West Lafayette, another in November here at home in Happy Valley. Penn State just took it to another level here in the third set. Everything was clicking for them. The block was exceptional here in the later part of this third set with Tremel getting some key touches and then a huge stuff block for the win. How about our State Farm State of Success and the great effort on the night from Penn State. You look at the leaders, Cameron Hanna guiding the way with 14 kills. Jess Merzik also in double figures as usual. A dig away from what would have been a ninth double-double of the season. Maggie Mendelson, she gets to the 10-kill plateau as well. And also providing four blocks. Those were the top trio of point producers for the Nittany Lions on the night. Penn State. Gets another home win, 18 in a row, dating back to last season at Rec Hall. And they do it via the sweep. We'll step aside. And tough down in the stretch there. Yeah, I think getting towards the end.